In this video, we'll show you how to set up a typical wire and valve locator, how to locate a valve, track and mark the wire location to aid in troubleshooting wiring issues, and how to determine the wire depth. Locating wires or valves buried under the ground is accomplished with a device, the transmitter, that sends an electrical signal down the wire path you are looking for, while you use a specialized locator wand, the receiver, to read the transmitted signal. As we trace out the wires, it's best practice to mark out the wire path with flags or marking paint to map out the path of the wire. Make sure you have either on hand to make fault finding easier after you locate the wires. To get started with this device, take the mobile grounding rod out of the box. If this is missing, a long screwdriver will work fine too. Press the rod into the ground, making sure you get at least 75% of the rod in the ground. It's very important to make very good contact with the ground. Attach the black wire alligator clip to the grounding rod and the red wire alligator clip to the wire you'll be tracing. If you connect to the common, you may get readings in multiple directions since the common wire runs to all valves in the system. If you do trace the common, you can find each valve in the system. And if you trace a particular station wire, you'll be led to only one valve. Before you power on the signal transmitter unit, be sure you're not touching the red or black leads. Believe me, you do not want to be touching any of these wires when they're energized. Once you power up, check your battery level before you begin to ensure the best signal readings. The analog needle should move all the way to the right. If it doesn't, insert a new battery. Then, you'll need to adjust the power output knob and increase it until you get a reading between 4 and 8. If you cannot reach a reading of at least four, turn the unit off and retry your grounding operation. A good ground is crucial for optimum operation. You may need to moisten the soil around the ground to get a better reading. If you're using a different model tracer than the Pro 700 or a different manufacturer's tracer, be sure to read the user manual before using the device for the first time. In our first scenario, we came across a valve that was not activating from the controller. The solenoid resistance readings looked good at the valve. This lets us know we have some issues with our wiring. We'll trace the wire from a known valve location back to the irrigation controller to determine its location. We need to find out the route the wires take back to the controller. I think we have an idea, but we're going to use a locator to map out the path. Begin with the wand pointing straight down at about four feet from the valve pit and walk a circle around the box. With the Pro 700, we're looking for a loud tone sound followed by a quiet null, then another loud tone. When you hear the null, you are directly over the wire. Once you find the location of the wire, continue to follow it using the wire tracer with a straight arm, swinging it back and forth like a pendulum, listening for the tone, null, tone. Place flags or use marker paint to note the location of the wire every 10 feet or so. This will help greatly when returning to find a fault in the wire path. Continue to perform these steps until you reach the controller location. If you come to a point where the reading is unclear, step back from the wire path and walk another four foot circle and look for multiple nulls. If you find an additional null off the center of the wire path, this likely indicates that you have located a T-splice or an additional direction of the common wire. Once you have identified the location in which the wire path is run, you can determine the approximate depth using your wire tracer. To do so, take your tracer wand and point it straight down over the null. Keeping the tip over the wire path, Rotate the wand 45 degrees perpendicular to the wire run. This will reintroduce the tone. That's okay. Next, step back from the path until you hear the null again. The distance from where the tip of the tracer started to the point that you reach the null is the approximate depth of the wire. Mark a flag with depth or write the wire depth next to the path with your marker paint to help you remember the depth. Test this in a few locations to ensure the wire was installed at the same depth throughout the property. In our next situation, we have a valve that won't turn on. 
Unfortunately, this valve has been in the ground for a while and the valve box has grown over, so we need to find its location. We checked the station output, which was good, and tested the resistance of the wire. It looks like it could be a bad solenoid, so we'll need to find the valve. We're going to use the Armada Pro 700 for this job. The Pro 700 is an older model tracer, but it still works great. Connect the red lead of the transmitter to the station wire leading to the valve and the black to ground. We'll trace the wire from the controller location and follow it to the valve location. We'll be able to find where the wire goes into the ground and then trace it along its path to the valve. Begin with the wand pointing straight down and begin your locate. With the Pro 700, we're looking for a loud tone sound followed by a quiet null, then another loud tone. You can track the wire audibly with the built-in speaker, with headphones, or by watching the analog meter. When you hear the null, you are directly over the wire. Once you find the location of the wire, continue to follow it using the wire tracer with a straight arm, swinging it back and forth like a pendulum listening for the tone, null, tone. Continue to perform these steps until you reach the valve location. When you reach the point where a valve solenoid is located, the signal will be very loud and expand into a large, approximate two to four foot diameter area of signal. This is your indication that you are over a valve or solenoid. Continue this process around the site for any other wires that need locating. Wires are normally buried in the same trench as the main line, so wire tracing is also a good process to determine the location of the main line throughout a site. Wire tracing, along with basic electrical troubleshooting skills, will help you solve a lot of common sprinkler system malfunctions. When you need to find the location of a faulty wire or shorted wire path, you should consider the use of a ground fault locator. Refer to the video on the GFL to learn more about this process. Thanks for watching.